Okay, how's everyone doing? So, thanks for coming to my talk, What to Deal with Containers. Um, originally I was hoping to maybe have the Seinfeld theme music playing and I could stand up here and tell some jokes, but I don't know any container jokes, so I have to scrap that. Um, just a little bit about me, my name's Matt Crape, uh, IT manager at C3 Group, company up in Canada. Uh, I blog at 42u.ca on Twitter, Matt, that IT guy. So, we're going to talk about team. Well, first we'll go read this lovely disclaimer. So, containers. Why did I choose to talk about this? If you've been in IT for any length of time, you know, uh, you've definitely noticed an uptick in the talk about containers in the enterprise. It's been growing and growing. It doesn't look like it's shrinking anytime soon. So, a lot of us may not be familiar with concept of containers, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to do a quick primer on what they are, how to use them, you know, some of the lingo that goes along with it. So, quite often when we visualize containers, we'll use an image, you know, such as those sea cans to say, hey, you know, when we're talking containers, they're kind of like this, and, and they really are. Um, in that, you know, say one of those is full of fidget spinners coming to VM world. And another one, one might be full of t-shirts. They're all contained to themselves. So the fidget spinners don't interact with the t-shirts at all. They're all separated. Similarly, if you were to fill one with cats, one with dogs, they wouldn't fight. Probably wouldn't be, you know, too good for them, but uh, they'd be separated. Containers, you know, such as Docker and stuff like that, it's actually a very similar concept in that you take an application and you package up everything that you need in there and you sort of wrap it up and you present it as an image. I like to use WordPress as an example. It's something a lot of us are familiar with. You know, it's got um, a web engine that it needs in there, it's got a database that it needs, some PHP. All that stuff needs to be configured. Using a container, you can package that all up so you're not stuck sitting there building these things out. Um, any Windows admins here may remember DLL Hell, you know, when you install something, be version 1.2 of a DLL, and you install something else and it needs 1.1 and all of a sudden stuff won't work. Containers take care of a lot of that because they're isolated. They have all the dependencies that they need for that specific image. One thing to know about them is by default, they don't have persistent storage. So you fire them up, you know, you do some sort of workload on there, when you power it down, any local storage on there is gone. You are able to use um, essentially file drivers to attach to existing storage. So if you have a SAN or something that you're presenting via iSCSI or NFS, there are ways that you could do it. So where that comes in handy is, uh, say you just need a bunch of read-only um, nodes going. So going back to WordPress, you run an e-commerce site, it's, you know, uh, Black Friday or something like that. You've got a lot more folks just doing read-only stuff. So you can spin up a bunch of containers so pull a read-only copy of the database to serve the pages. When they hit add to cart and go to the cart, you could just bounce that over to another cluster that actually has write access to that database. So uh, that's kind of getting into the how are they used section here. So one of the great benefits is that they scale fast and easy. All the stuff can be scripted. We'll talk about orchestration tools shortly here. Um, but you know, you need to spin up one container, 10, 100. You can do that with these. The other great thing is um, a great use case for them is developer environment. Going back to WordPress, say you're a plugin developer, you need to test against 10 different versions of WordPress. Currently, you probably have to you know, spin up 10 VMs, configure each one with what you need, and do the testing on that. Using something like a container, you can download the individual images that you need for those versions. You can say, you know what, I'm going to spin up 4.7.3. Okay, pass the test, spin up the next one. So there, there's definite advantages to that. And I keep using WordPress as an example, but there's all sorts of containers available, you know. Minecraft is probably the largest one out there. Um, you do need to consider security when you're architecting these. Containers do um, have access to some of the attributes of the underlying host system. So they're not completely isolated from the host. You want to take that into consideration when you're designing these solutions from a security and even from a don't shoot yourself in the foot um, approach. So there's lots of different container engines out there. Docker, 
you know, it's probably the biggest one out there, at least most well known. They came onto the scene a few years ago. Um, and they, they were the first ones sort of make it easy and put a big push. But, you know, we're at VMworld here. There's vSphere integrated containers, um, which is VMware's approach to running containers in your vSphere environment. It's kind of cool. It gives you some basic management tools, visibility into the, the individual containers. Um, got Rocket by CoreOS, LXD by Ubuntu. This last one, though, Jails, uh, it's a FreeBSD uh, approach to it. They're very simil similar, but they're distinct in that they don't have that same sort of security concern. So a jail tends to be um, just a very small footprint copy of the operating system running in there for a specific task. Difference being, you know, that it's that complete segregation, I guess you could say, of the um, security model. If you want to try those out, a um, very easy way to do that is uh, there's a project called FreeNAS. It's an open source NAS software. One of the options in there is uh, to have these plugins, right? So you can find some to like catalog your music library. You can just go in there and install it. It actually fires up a jail in the back end, gives its own networking, all that sort of stuff. So real easy to get started with those. So a lot of us are probably familiar with VM sprawl. Back when virtual machines first started gaining a lot of traction, you know, a lot of folks were like, well, hey, if we can spin up another VM, let's put that application on its own VM and that one on its own VM. Which is kind of ironic because we went from you know, trying to scale down the amount of hardware physical servers that we needed, and now we're just scaling, scaling up the number of VMs that we have. A lot of us have you know, basically conquered that challenge. But you know, talk about how easy containers are to deploy and you know to scale and all that. You need some way to manage them easily. That's where orchestration comes in. So there's a few different orchestration engines. Um, Docker Swarm. You know, it's made by the same folks who make Docker, which is one of the largest ones out there. Uh, that's fairly common. You've got Kubernetes, uh, which a lot of folks have probably heard of. Uh, that's actually a Google project. Uh, it's their take on the whole orchestration um, task here. What's neat about them, I'll give a quick plug for um, NetApp. They have an open source project called Trident that actually works with Kubernetes. And what you're able to do is all of a sudden assign quotas and profiles um, to, to your storage and in effect to the developer. So what you can do with that is you can work it in so you can say this developer has access to these three tiers of storage. You know, in the gold tier, he can have up to 50 gigs you know, on SSD, on silver, maybe 500 or something. But you're able to bake those rules into the orchestration. So where that comes in real handy is when you need to do scaling, you, know, you might have some sort of process that says, uh, if our web servers are hitting 80% you know, use, fire off this policy you know, where we'll give you some silver storage. If it's hitting 80% use of that, fire off this policy that gives you the gold storage. The last one here is um, Mesos slash Marathon. So that one's kind of interesting in that Mesos started off as um, an architecture to manage compute. So they tossed this Marathon thing on there as well, which is basically a framework to help you manage uh, containers. One point that uh, I actually forgot to mention over on this slide is um, Microsoft is getting involved with containers. So back with, I think it was 2012, they launched Nano, which was kind of like their sort of attempt at containers. It was all, you know, PowerShell based and fire up processes. Well, now they actually support Docker. So you can actually run Docker right on your Windows server if you want. So th there's plenty of options out there as far as, you know, uh, where to run it, how you want to run it, all that sort of stuff. So if you want to get started, it's definitely not hard to do. Uh, there's plenty of options available. Docker makes it nice and easy. Um, you know, if you're a Windows guy, you can download it for Windows. Uh, if you're a Mac guy, you can download it for Mac. Installing a desktop, you can be up and running in a few minutes easily. Um, they've got a public repository. There's lots of repositories out there with you know, a slew of different images on there. Um, and yeah, I mean, it tends to be fairly easy to get up and running and fool around with. And the great thing is it's really hard to cause damage with them, right? Because once you turn them off, they're gone. So play around with them. And with that, I am done. <laughs>